What's going on guys? Welcome back to another review of a Gundam HG Battle Log kit. Today we're taking a look at the Gundam Live Lance Heaven. When this series of kits was first announced, this was the one that really caught my eye the most, just because it was a cool, unique design, I liked it, and it was an interesting take on the Gundam Death Scythe Hell which, as you guys will see when we take a look at the runners, a couple of the runners in this kit are labeled as Gundam Death Scythe Hell, so I guess, surprise, that means that, uh, maybe not so much of a surprise, that it's very likely in the future we will be getting a normal Gundam Death Scythe Hell HG kit, which will be nice. Uh, but in the meantime, this is a really cool kind of take on that design, mixing a lot of other elements of other different mobile suit designs into this as well. And just obviously this all white color scheme is not something that we see very often, so it's always cool to see something different every now and then. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Gundam Live Lance Heaven. We got some very nice looking box art here on the front, but it's pretty standard to the line. One thing that I really love about this Gundam is that the name and color scheme represent basically the exact opposite of the kit that it's based off of, the Death Scythe Hell. So instead of the black color scheme, you have white. Instead of Death Scythe, you have Live, Lance, and then instead of Hell, you have Heaven. So it's just kind of a cool little thing. But it's some really striking box art here with that Lance effect, the beam effect part with the explosion going on in the background. The Gundam looks very cool there in that white color scheme. Over here on the side of the box, we can see this is number 02 in the Gundam Breaker Battle Log lineup. On the bottom of the box, we got a look at what the kit is going to look like, all painted up, front and back there with the cloak opened up with the beam effect there in the lands. You got a little bit of information there in Japanese and English if you want to check that out. Over here, we can see what it's going to look with the active cloak closed around the Gundam. It looks very cool. Obviously, that's uh, from the Death Scythe Hell gonna be a little bit differently styled but you can see what that looks like in a few different action poses and things and of course the lance transforms into a scythe mode which does look very cool there with that right on the other side once again a little advertisement here just kind of showing how you can mix and match parts uh, like in the mobile game the Gundam Breaker game and then an introduction to the Gundam Breaker battle log series there Opening the box up, I assume we're going to have a mix of parts in here. There'll be some new stuff and then some stuff recycled from the HG Gundam Death Scythe. And probably some very interesting things here. Maybe some hints as to an HG Death Scythe Hell release in the future. So we'll take a look at all the runners here in just a second. Let's first just take a look at the manual here. As always, we got the box art up there on the top half. And going down here, we have some line art of the design. It looks very cool there. And some really cool artwork there of the Gundam. It looks great. And some more information about the Gundam there in Japanese and in English. The Gunpla made before, the Code Theta, and Toma there. A little bit of information about him and an illustration of the character there. Around right on the back side, a little bit about the customized plan there. Some information about the weapons, and you have this all in Japanese and English as well, which is very nice if you want to read some more about the Gundam and everything. You got some design inspiration over here from, of course, the Death Scythe Hell and also the Versigo Gundam, especially in the chest section, so that's cool to see and the color guide down here in Japanese and in English if you need to refer to that. Opening it up, we've got our parts list here in color and you can see there's a lot of X's around there. Those are gonna be all leftover parts that you won't need, so definitely some recycled runners here, of course, with this kit. Once again, a little thing here about kit bashing with other kits in the line. You should be able to do that very easily. And then the rest of this is just going to cover all of the construction, how to use the cloak, how to use the weapons, and all that. So here's a look at our sticker sheet. We got our eye stickers on there, and then a lot of color correcting stickers there. All those big ones are going to be going around on like the cloak and things, so you'll have a fair number of those. We've got our polycaps here, PC002 in gold, looking very nice. For our beam effect parts here, we're really only going to use one of these, but these are in a clear blue with the sparkles injected in there. I don't really care so much for that, but this is actually Runner F, originally from the HGUC Shinanju kit. Runner A is a new four color runner there. You got a couple of clear blue parts up at the top. Then you got some white, some light grayish violet color over there on the side and some yellow. So the runner marking for this is gonna say HG Gundam Live Lance Heaven. Runner B1 is in molded gold. That is our wing frame runner. But then runners C1 and C2 are also molded gold. These are from the Gundam Death Scythe kit, as we can see on the runner label right there. Runner D is also in that light lavender gray color. This one, once again, is from the Gundam Death Scythe originally, so you'll have a couple leftover parts on here. Runner E1 is in an off-white color, so as you can see, it's got a little bit of tint to, to uh, like lavender in there. Now the runner marking for this one actually says HD 144 scale Gundam Death Scythe Hell. So that's uh, kind of a little bit of a confirmation there. 
And then probably not too surprising here, runners F1 and F2 are in white, and these would be our cloak parts, so of course these are also going to be from the Death Scythe Hell. And just to give you guys a look at how the white and the very, very, very light lavender off-white compare, there you can see them side by side, so you'll have some nice color tones there. So that's everything guys, some new parts, some old parts, and some parts that can basically confirm the Death Scythe Hell in the future as well. So let's go ahead and get this kit put together and see how it looks. Hey guys, just a reminder that USA Gundam Store and myself are currently putting on the Battle Log contest for you guys. So if you've not heard about that or if you haven't entered yet, you can still enter. The deadline for the contest is April 22nd. If you'd like to enter and want to hear all the details about the contest, there will be a link down in the video description below. So check that out and looking forward to seeing all your guys' entries. Now, back to the video. Alright guys, here's the kit all built up, just with some quick and dirty panel lining done on that, just with some panel line pen. Especially on all the white plastic, doing a little bit of panel lining will help a lot to just bring out the details and just make it look a little bit nicer. And while personally I'm not too sold on the color scheme of this, I do really like the design of this Gundam. Very cool mix of design elements. You obviously have a lot of design aspects from the Death Scythe Hell, but there's a good mix of other stuff in there like the Versigo chests and the, it's the version of the Escalapius I think is what's kind of inspiring the head design as well, if I remember correctly. So it's a really cool design. Actually, it's probably one my favorite designs of this series, but I'll definitely be looking forward to repainting this in a different color scheme later on. But let's go ahead and take a closer look. Here on the head we've got stickers for the head camera, the eyes of course, stickers on the front and back of the shoulders here, those little blue bits. Up inside the cloak you got yellow stickers there, also up inside the back skirt yellow stickers for the color correction up in there as well. Around here on the back of the skirt you also have a yellow sticker right there, and on what would be kind of the front of the cloak, these little blue stickers that go on top of those yellow parts right there. The articulation of the head is going to be pretty normal, we're going to be going up to about there, down to there, pretty standard, not really going to have any issues turning the head left to right. The ab crunch in the stomach will allow you to move that forward a little bit, but you're kind of coming up off the ball joint there at that point, so be a little bit careful. The ab crunch on this is not that great. But what you have to make up for that is actually a mechanism in the top of the hip section that will allow you to bring this a little bit farther forward, it actually kind of lifts up the peg sticking up from the hips that the ball drain is attached onto, it actually lifts that whole section up and it's kind of hard to show you guys, but hopefully you can see that up inside there. And that will give you a little bit further ab crunch there, which is pretty nice. And then of course we got standard rotation there side to side in the midsection. We got the cloak out of the way because this front part of course will close down. You can also change the angle of that by rotating that side to side a little bit. Actually the front and back sections are connected so if you rotate the front part out it will rotate the back part in. You can also bring the back part up as well too if you want to have the front and back both up like so. The side part will move up and down. You can also rotate that here as well as just on a ball joint plugged right into there so you could lift everything up and it would be looking like that. You can also rotate this entire section and you can also rotate this whole arm that that's connected onto. You can rotate that back like so. The shoulders and arms are going to all work very normally. The shoulder poly cap will pull out to the front like that for a better articulation. The shoulder armor will lift up to there. You can bring the arm up to a little bit more than 90 degrees, not too much though. You got rotation at the top of the arm, a double joint here at the elbow to give you a nice full bend there. The wrist is just a ball joint. Front skirts will move up and down on their own, but you can clip them apart in the middle if you want separate articulation. You can kind of move that a little bit further up out of the way like so, if you kind of jam that a little bit. Side skirt will move up and down a little bit, but you don't have too much room for that to move, so I feel like side articulation out of the legs going out to the side is going to be a little bit limited by that. And the back skirt does move up and down here as well, which is nice. The hip joint will swing to the front so you have a little bit better forward articulation here of the leg. You can bring that farther up so that way you can get a nicer forward bend like that with that double joint there at the knee. Our ankle armor is attached at like the front of the ankle joint so you got a little bit of up and down movement there with that. The toe is actually separated so you can point the toe down, move that up and down and then the entire foot will move forward and back and also rotate that there side to side like that a little bit as well. You got some pretty full detail up underneath the feet minus a little hollow gap there right at the end of the toe. Now for the weapons and accessories we do actually have some optional hands other than just these standard holding hands in this case which is nice. We've got this nice set of open hands like so. And an alternate set of holding hands with a thumb extended, so this would be like especially for holding long weapon like the scythe weapon that we have included with this. And so this would be our main weapon, the beam lance. Now this is in the rod mode and it just can just fire like a gun sort of style weapon. Alternatively we can turn it into lance mode by attaching the beam effect onto that. 
just like so, just have it straight. Then we can switch up to scythe mode simply by bending that, extending this kind of bit out there like that. Honestly, don't really like it in scythe mode. I know like with the death, with the death scythe hell, scythe weapon is kind of its thing, really not really feeling like this is the right style beam effect part for this. I really wish they would have given us a new beam effect for the scythe style weapon. Because as it is, this just looks kind of weird. Probably just going to stick to the lance version because I do like that. Now you do have among your extra parts, of course, the shorter version of the beam axe effect part from the Shinanju. And you could use it like that. And I do actually kind of like this as just sort of like a long axe or kind of like halberd kind of style weapon. It actually looks really cool. So I will definitely try using this one as well. Also among the leftover parts, you have the uh, closed version of the scythe, which would, I believe on the original death scythe kit, it attaches onto the back skirt. Uh, in this case, it's not really gonna be useful for anything, but you do have that in case you wanted to use it for something. And in case you didn't wanna go with the full cloak, you have these backpack parts, which just attach onto the side of the backpack instead, again, from the original death scythe kit. So you could use those. And you have a handful of other leftover parts, but there's nothing really too noteworthy, except again, the fact that some of them come from the Death Scythe Hell, which does seem like an inevitable release at this point. So there you have it, guys. So I gotta say, another really nice addition to the battle log line. Like I said, I really like the design. I think there's a lot of really cool mix of design features in this from different Gundams. So you can see there's a lot of different inspirations, but they come together really nicely. The color scheme as well, of course, does help to tie everything together. And while I said earlier, you know, I'm not that big of a fan of the color scheme of this for this particular Gundam, it's not. It's definitely not bad at all. It looks nice. It's just not to my personal taste. I would probably want to change it. In the addition of the clear blue parts on the forearms for the Zero Systems, there are also a really nice addition to this. I really like the look of those. And although some people might be disappointed by the fact that you really only have one weapon, it's nice that at least it's like multifunctional. You have different effect parts you can use for that and you can use it in a couple of different ways. I don't really care for the scythe mode actually all that much. The other modes of that are actually, I think, a little bit more interesting, look, look more cool. And overall, it's a very nicely detailed, nicely articulated kit. You really only have like a main major seam line like on the back of the leg and that's really kind of about it. There's not too much in the way of seam lines on this, on the top of the shoulders there as well. It's another really common place for normal HG kits. But I gotta say, I really like the kit. So let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think about this? Are you excited for the inevitable Death Scythe Hell? Who knows when that'll actually be coming out, but I think it's, you know, at least we can sort of confirm that Bandai at least has some of the runners for it already planned out. But something to look forward to in the future. If you guys are interested in checking this kit out, of course, you can check it out at USA Gundam Store. The link and the coupon code for you guys to use will be down in the video description below, as always. So thank you all so much for watching today. So thank you all so much for watching today. And until next time, as always, thank you all so much for checking out the video today. If you'd like to like the video, comment, subscribe, any of that's greatly appreciated. Until next time, guys, hope you're all having a great day. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.